Uh, right now, we got our next guest ready to rock and roll. He is an old friend of the show. Uh, very intriguing concept coming up for his next fight. He, of course, is the former uh, Power Ranger, Jason David Frank. But he's got a very intriguing thing going on right now. Through May, you can actually vote, or through part of May, you can actually vote on uh, contestants, or not contestants, competitors, to face Jason David Frank in his next fight coming up in Texas in June. So it's a very intriguing uh, concept. They have a a few opponents listed on a website, and you'll hear all about it during the interview. But, uh, you know, pretty intriguing little idea, and I like it a lot. So they're going to be uh, running this contest for a few more weeks. So if you get a chance to get out there and vote for the guy you want to see face Jason David Frank next. But let's talk to him. As I mentioned, he's a former Power Ranger, now professional mixed martial artist. His name is Jason David Frank. Let's talk to him. MMA Weekly Radio, Damon Martin, back with one of our very favorite guests, Jason David Frank. Jason, welcome back to the show. Thanks, man. It's good to be back. It's been a while, but I love coming back to you guys' show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, last time we talked to you was before your last fight was scheduled. Unfortunately, it didn't didn't end up happening. No, I was, yeah, I was a little upset at that, man. The, um, you know, in the MMA world, there's a lot of promotion stuff going on, a lot of promoters, and, you know, a lot of controversy and the stuff. So, unfortunately, I mean, I trained, I dropped weight, I was ready. Um, and then that's kind of the worst feeling, you know, uh, just getting there and then the whole show just shutting down, you know. Not for my reasons at all. I mean, it had nothing to do with me and, the, you know, just problems with the promoter and uh, other issues and stuff like that. I guess my opponent's blood work came back bad and it just was a myth. So um, I just put my head back in the game, training really hard and uh, switched camp. So I'm with a new camp now. Uh, out of here in Houston, Silverback MMA here in Houston, Texas, with uh, Coach Tony, Coach Jazz, Coach Julio. I've been working a lot on um, on uh, all my all my different you know boxing and kickboxing and jujitsu, and actually it's been really really well. It's been really going good for me, man. I'm really happy with it. So um, I'm excited with my new team, and we got some exciting uh, teammates. Derek, who was the uh, number one heavyweight here in Houston, I spar with him a lot, and uh, he's a big dude, and uh, I got some big guys now I can finally spar over there, so I'm really excited about it. Yeah, was there was there one reason, ten reasons, what, what was the biggest thing that, that made you decide to switch camps? Um, well, you know, I, I mean, Rocky, Rocky Long is a great trainer, don't get me wrong, but Rocky went into promotions and stuff, and, you know, when you go into promotions and other things, it just really takes you away from... Um, you know, focusing on one particular thing. Uh, Silverback MMA, um, you know, they're they're not into promotions. They're into promoting the fighters, but also training. And I just needed consistency. And, you know, I love Rocky. He was a great guy, but it was just one of those decisions that I decided to, you know, Silverback, being in Houston, you have, I have 98% people who love me. And then the 2% people that are haters are those keyboard warriors that just won't leave me alone. And, uh, you know, those 2%, who cares? I'm here for the 98% of the people that love me. Um, and Silverback was one of the 98% of the people who, you know, liked me, believed in me, and uh, for a long time. So I just went there, and several reasons, but most of, honestly, just something new. And um, I'm, I'm here with Silverback. I'm not going nowhere. They've showed a lot of loyalty and support with me. Uh, Dale's over there. A lot, a lot of good people that... Um, you know, a lot of teammates went with me, too. Mac, uh, the, the guy I first fought, he's over there now. We just got a lot of good people over there, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy. So as long as I'm happy, and it, it really comes down to time. I train a lot of different, you know, a lot of different hours throughout the day, but their time just really fits my needs. They're always there for me when I need it, and I need to just get in and out and train for three hours, and I, I, mean, I got schools to run. I'm a dad. I'm, you know, I got a lot of things going on. I'm a family man. I got just a lot of stuff going on. So um, it's just several reasons, but but I'm happy where I'm at. Yeah. Now let me ask you this, Jason, because you know obviously with you know you've got you still got a movie career going on. You mentioned you got a family. I mean, lots of other stuff going on. And one of the biggest things I hear from guys in the MMA world is when you deal with pr- uh, promoters that are unprofessional, they don't have their stuff together. Uh, you know, whatever the case may be. Now I'm not trying to point fingers at the last promotion you worked with, but does that ever get frustrating for you? Yeah, it does. Because you know, I. But fortunately for me, I'm not doing it for money. <clears throat> but there's a lot of my friends that, that live paycheck to paycheck. So when a fight doesn't come through and you train for three months and you don't even get your show money, you don't get any money, it really puts a damper on things. And, you know, I'm not doing this for money. But even with me, man, you put all the training in, your fight, you're not fighting, you're not getting paid. It just was three months that made you better. But it does get frustrating. And, you know, um, 
I don't just have small schools here in Houston. I mean, my schools are really big. Between all three of my schools, I have about a thousand students. I got a school in in uh, California, uh, Rising Sun Karate Academy, uh, mixed martial arts in California. That we've got three hundred students there. Uh, Randy Wood runs that school for me. Real good partner. Been loyal for years. I got a partner here, Jason Felton, at the Kingwood School where I'm at now, and then I run my big school at Atascacita with uh, Sam, one of my instructors that run that school, Sam and Jordan. So, you know, I train a lot of staff members to keep a really successful karate school. My kids are good. I mean, my, my karate kids are really, really good. I got a lot of national competitors. In fact, I sent a student, Cole, who used to be a brown belt here at well, John Hackleman's camp, and he was destroying kids in stand-up. I mean, he won the first tournament over there. The only thing he lacked, of course, was wrestling and jiu-jitsu. But now we put that together. I got, you know, Gracie Bajas right next door to me now. And, uh, you know, with Tony, I'm doing tons of jiu-jitsu over there. And, you know, everything's just kind of falling into place. And I think I'm in a better position right now in my life to take a little bit more uh, serious fights. And uh, that's kind of what's going on now is that, you know, Houston, I'm pretty much letting anyone, everyone pick who I'm fighting. There's five people that the, the fans pick, so there's no controversy. They can pick whoever they want. I'll fight anybody. Um, and it's just coming down to that, you know. So that's what we have going on with legacy, legacy fights now here in Houston. I'm fighting for them July 16th, and the fans are pretty much – I wouldn't say fans. I, I, I honestly, I say the haters. Uh, <laughs> fans, fans love me, but the haters are picking people who want, you know, who want to fight me, and that's fine. So we're down to five candidates, and uh, you know, go to Legacy Fights, and um, you know, click on and and pick the guy I'm fighting. I, I don't really care at this point. I'm really well trained. I'm ready to go in, and I'm just ready for battle. And you know, and I've been I've been uh, training every single day, and uh, I've been excited about it. So yeah, absolutely. Now the I love the concept of the fans getting to pick your. It's, a, it's something different. It's something kind of cool. Uh, and, and it gets a lot of interactivity. I know you love interacting with your fans. This is a whole new level. Yep, it is. And, you know, fans always say, hey, who do you want to fight? And, you know, it don't matter, honestly. Um, I do got my eye on a few people, but I'm keeping that under the hat. And uh, the, the guy I have my eye on will definitely win because uh, I know he will. And uh, he's from a camp out here that, you know, no one really likes. And, uh, you know, it's going to be great to go in there. And I'm, I'm just – doing what I can and you know I feel there's a lot of you know I used to get frustrated I used to go on the computer and you know and I you read and you read all this hate stuff but you know what I don't do that no more so people that right I interact with the fans I interact with people who love me um, everyone's always got something bad to say and the, my philosophy is I could be spending all these hours on the computer reading about things, but I'm sharpening my sword instead. I'm training, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I have to do. I'm not going to waste any, any time reading something bad about me, you know, because I realized in life it doesn't matter who, and I'm sure you have it too, if it's competitors or if it's someone else. You always have, even someone that's never met you before, going to always, always, always say something about you. And no matter what you do, you're not going to make them a fan. So you just kind of ignore them, you know, and that's kind of what I've been doing and been learning in this business. Ever since I got into the mixed martial arts business here in Houston, it's, it's kind of like a high school scene, to be honest with you. You know, there's a lot of immature people. Uh, it's a high school scene. It's, you know, my fighter's better than your fighter. You know, that's why I'm letting the fans pick. I'll go in, do my job, and take care of it. I think until people get to the bigger leagues, then maybe it becomes a little bit more professional. Sure, you have those breakouts and, uh, you know, weigh-ins, and that's to hype up the show. Look what uh, uh, Koscheck and, and GSP did. But GSP handled himself like a gentleman. And even after he whooped them, you know, he told them, hey, you know, give give credit to Koscheck. And he, he's a gentleman of what martial arts is all about. I just wish we had more people in that kind of sport, but we're not. We don't have because it's a it's a – a man's, you know, I'm better than you type of sport. I just really wish that martial arts can be brought into the sport. But it's very hard to bring that type of attitude into the sport because, you know, your testosterone's up there, you're angry, you you know, it's a, it's a lot different world than I really thought it was going to be. So I try to stay positive and I try to stay around the positive people that won't take me to the negative places. Yeah. I know, you know, from talking to Frank Shamrock over the years, I know him pretty well. He was one of the guys that always said, you know, mixed martial arts, you know, would eventually be the death of, of traditional martial arts and that made him sad because he grew up as a traditional martial artist and I love both I mean I'm, I, I grew up in traditional martial arts but I love MMA how, how, I mean how can we combat that do you think it's something that's going to happen because you mentioned it, that, that that mindset you know that mindset is way different mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you know why I think it's going to happen is because you have a lot of good people out there. Like uh, Mike Bronzoulis is uh, one of my friends, and he holds the 170 title out here. Um, he did an awesome, awesome fight on Sharks, okay? He fought a guy 20 and 10. You know, people were like, oh, that fight was sloppy. That Mike won. He won a guy who was taller, stronger, had more fights than him. Mike is still undefeated here in Houston. I know Mike will get his chance at the uh, UFC, but Mike's an incredible, talented fighter. The only problem is that he doesn't have ranks in certain things. Like, he's not ranked as a karate guy. He's not ranked in jiu-jitsu, which is phenomenal in all of them. You know, and I feel that that, you know, people, I don't need credentials. Well, I don't need this. I don't, well, you know what? That's where the true martial arts began. There was an original belt, which was the color of white. You never paid for testing fees. You only had one belt, which was white. And over a period of time, the belt got darker and darker and darker. Then it became black. Then people would say, wow, you're a black belt. That's how the whole belt system came into theory. But the problem is no one's really caring about belts no more. And it's not about, well, I'm a, you know, seventh-degree black belt, I'm going to go in there. No, it's about teaching the youth of earning goals and having a, a, a mindset of saying, you know what, I want to get my next belt. And karate has been watered down. Even Taekwondo has watered down the whole system. There's a lot of politics behind everything. But no matter what system it is, I think it's very important for people to earn credentials and belts. And it's just what's the difference of – earning a title than earning a black belt. You go. My school is not easy to get a black belt. It's very hard to get a black belt. You just got to look at what schools you want to go to. Then there's other schools you can get a black belt in 18 months. At my school, you got to be here seven years. There's no belt testing fees, and we're going to test you about 12 hours. It's a very, very hard test. It pushes people to the limits. I've had a guy who... Uh, has been in college and been with the Pepperdine University, Dave Rosar, uh, you know, Dean, and all these people said, Dave Rosar, one of my black belts, told me, wow, this was better than anything I've ever earned in college, achieving this black belt. And it's not an easy test. So I think people are not looking at it that way no more. It's kind of like what they can do. Well, we don't need a belt because the math don't lie. That's correct. But what's going to happen after your MMA career and you want to open a school? Are you going to say, well, you know, I'm just a uh, – you know, MMA guy, I got 20 wins, who cares? You don't have credentials from all these old school Japanese guys that the family tree goes way back in history. They're just kind of starting from fresh. That's what I think Frank was talking about, traditional martial arts. And these people, you know, are teaching MMA. There's no rank system. There's no belt system. It's just go out there, kick butt, kick butt. But that's not what karate was designed for. Karate was designed for goal-oriented people. At the same time, karate was designed for the little guy to take out the bigger guy. And then karate was designed to, to, to send against animals a long time ago. But we, we, we have lost that tradition. But champs like uh, George St. Pierre is still there. And that tradition is still there. You know, so uh, you have a lot of good people that are out there that are still, you know, doing the martial arts. But unfortunately, I have to agree with Frank that eventually, in time, mixed martial arts will take over, and you'll have all these mixed martial arts schools everywhere, and the whole rank system won't even be in place. It won't even matter if you're a yellow belt, blue belt. It won't even matter. And that's sad to see, you know, because there's, there's thousands of years that go back into this ranking system that we're yeah, just Yeah, and lose. I think there's a lot of positives for MMA because obviously you're an MMA fan. I'm an MMA fan. I mean, I want to see the sport get bigger and things like that, but as a person that grew up around karate and jiu-jitsu, and different things. It, it is sad to see some of the more traditional arts, you know, kind of go away. Yeah, but you know, this is a new thing. You know, these kids won't know a difference. Mixed martial arts is going to be the way to go. They're going to be excited. They're going to train. I just hope that they get the message I got when I trained in karate was with the brotherhood, the dedication, the respect, the cooperation, discipline, confidence, attitude, and self-respect. We had creeds. There was a reason why we did martial arts. You can teach mixed martial arts as long as you don't forget the values of what we're teaching kids of America today. Say no to drugs. Choose right from wrong. These are things that need to be installed constantly in our kids or we're just going to go ahead and train them in karate and then they're going to punch someone at school and it's just going to escalate violence everywhere. I'm a big fan at mixed martial arts, but, it, but if you're going to teach it to kids, you have to have a guideline and you still, I believe, have to stick to the traditions of Mr. Miyagi theory. I really believe that or it's just going to yeah. go out of hand. I do think the one thing that MMA does carry from the traditional martial arts is the is the team aspect because we see it with you know a lot of the big camps like your camp. I mean, you came on here and immediately started talking about your teammates. We see that a lot in MMA. So that's one aspect I think we will carry over and that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I, I, do. I, I totally agree with that, but 
I believe that mixed martial arts teaches a lot of adults. I don't, you know, when it comes to kids, I still think that kids, you know, because I come, my school's an award-winning school. I mean, I've won, I've won awards across the world for my karate school. I just, I've tested out mixed martial arts. I've tested out karate. Karate is still one of the biggest things that sells for kids. In fact, I've had a couple of mixed martial arts tournaments here, and I've had parents cancel because they say they just don't want to cheer on their boy beating up another kid. They don't understand the competition aspect of that. So it needs to be balanced out. For, for adults, absolutely, mixed martial arts, this is my team, this is what I'll do. But when it comes to kids, they have to know the difference. Hey, you can't go to school, pick someone up, double leg them, and stuff the fist down their throat. It can't be done. So I'm hoping that in time, you know, that mixed martial arts still has those theories and they still have the codes of the dragons and they still hate, you know, raise your right hand, I promise not to use karate on my brother and sister, my friends, or anyone else. Those are important, and I hope that stays, you know, because my little girl, she does mixed martial arts. She's six. She's a tough little girl. She won second in cage war. Jenna, she's tough, and I'm glad she's tough, but I also teach her how to do it the right way, you know, when to do it, when not to do it. But the most important thing that I care about my little girl is that she can be a boyfriend. <laughs> but that's all I care about. I don't want her to take it. I don't want her to get taken yeah, well, that's, a, you know? that's so just like uh, you brought up Karate Kid, one of my favorite all-time movies. That's you know you got the teachers like Mr. Miyagi, and you got the uh, the, the the Cobra Kai yeah. schools. Keep them away from the Cobra Kai schools, right? Just there's always. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, now you got this. Uh, obviously, the fans are choosing your next fight, which I know is going to happen in May. Now, when does the voting close for the uh, fight preparation? When will you find out for sure who you're fighting? Um, the voting's going to close May 14th, and uh, my fight July, July 16th. July 16th. I'm sorry. So I still got time. Yeah, July 16th. It's going to end on, uh, you know, May 14th. So uh, LegacyFights.net uh, or .com, just Legacy Fights in Houston. You can vote on there. And, um, you know, so I'm excited, man. I mean, it's come down to five people, and, um, you know, it doesn't matter. This is the name of the game. I'm just, um, you know, there's a, a lot of people that, like I said, there's one particular guy, and I'm not even going to give him mention his name on this because he don't deserve it. One guy didn't even shake my hand. That's in the for the first five that they picked, and I hope I fight him, and I'm probably going to. But I just feel that's disrespectful. You know, I shook everyone's hand, and he didn't shake my hand. That's not sportsmanship. You know, so I'm, I'm hoping that you know that's the guy that uh, you know I get to fight. And the way it's looking, it's looking pretty good right now. So, but um, but ultimately I'm excited, and you know. Um, it's just the name of the game, and, and I got a movie, The One Warrior, that's that's now finished and completed, and um, I'm doing a Christian movie uh, in May. Uh, the name will be uh, determined, and the reason why I'm doing a Christian movie is, uh, you know, I got Jesus in tap, and it just came to me, and I just want to do something good for God, to be honest with you, and uh, the, 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 to continue being a good role model, and um, I just donated my services for absolutely free on the movie, so I'm excited about it. I'm getting the script. They're writing a special part just for me, so that's going to be in um in may so um i got some stuff going on but i train every day at silverback and um you know those guys push me over there you know it's, it's definitely a hard camp and it's stuff that i've never done before um but you know coach tony i mean uh, i love the guy and uh you know he texts me all the time and anytime i have a problem you know they take care of their fighters anytime you're going through a personal problem they're there for you they want to make sure your mind's straight and all that stuff you know and um I'm just excited, you know, so it's one of those things where um, I get to train and, uh, you know, be happy. And then, of course, I go home and my family and, you know, eat dinner tonight. And uh, so that's Excellent. pretty much well, what I'm going to Well, Jason, do. it's always a pleasure to catch up with you. Obviously, uh, hopefully we can have you on the show once you find out who your opponent is. It's always a pleasure to have you on. And before I get you out of here, obviously you got your teammates, sponsors, people supporting you. Anybody you want to give a shout to, go right ahead. You know, um, I, I just uh, – I appreciate everybody who's looking out for me, honestly, uh, all the fans out there that, that constantly support me. You know, we got, um, you know, G's Didn't Tap, Bull Shirts is now, I've, I've merged with a big company, Bull Shirts, so, you know, they're there. And pretty much all the people that are running my school, and uh, I already mentioned them, and, uh, you know, my family, and I'd like to thank God for me being here, and, um, you know, and uh, Mick and Colin at Legacy, who's uh, giving me a chance to fight on their card July 16th. So if you haven't got a chance to vote, go ahead and um, you can go to my Facebook at Jason David Frank Official Fan Page, and, um, you know, go ahead and uh, post the uh, vote for someone, and uh, I'm going to fight them. 
So, and but also, Damon, thanks to you guys for putting me on the air and you know giving me a chance to reach out and talk and uh, tell people what I'm up to. I always appreciate you guys having me, and I love the absolutely. We always love having you on, Jason. Best of luck in training. Like I said, I'm sure we'll talk to you before the uh, the next fight happens in July. You got it, buddy. All right, talk to you soon, buddy. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right.